it started with the two folks on this team and Carolyn, our uh, new Voodoo founder, uh, at the Moneyball session at the All Access Summit that we uh, did in March was very popular. And so we've decided to extend that and we're calling this now the lead up to the fall of Moneyball. Lots of little things you can do to move your ratings, not a couple of tenths of a share that might make you feel good inside, but really when it comes to money, and the revenue that your sales department brings in. It's all about those tenths of a rating point. So we're here to share practical ideas to help you get that done. And Lee, we do it with not what we think, or we don't necessarily base it completely on our experience as former programmers. We actually go in and ask lots and lots of people for the answers to some key questions. And have been doing it since we opened the doors at New Voodoo. We've interviewed thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people. The data we'll be sharing now uh, as the basis is on the back of 5,000 plus respondents. And I think it's important to know two things. One, the big TSL that we're seeing in these latest data come out of the millennials, kind of between mm -hmm. Gen X and Gen Z. When we get to Gen X, you're starting to find some people who are able to take early retirement, who are stepping a little bit away, perhaps, from the day-to-day -day work life. And so we see slightly lower TSL there. And then we've talked about the Gen Z, uh, well, the, the challenges that Radio C is on the Gen Z side. And then so we'll see the biggest TSL, the biggest bump comes from the millennials. And then we'll drill in hard on the ratings likely. We label them RPS, yes. The people who are likely to go through all the tricks and all the things they have to do to remain impaneled with Nielsen, where they got to get everybody over age five in the household to comply with carrying around their little pager, or wearing something extra around their wrist or however they choose to do it. It's very important. But if they're going to stay in the panel, you've got to do all that. And so it's critically important. It always boils down to about the same thing. It's about a fifth of our sample of this already research compliance sample say that, yes, I would go through that extra hassle in order to uh, to have a, a voice, if you will, in the radio ratings. So I went through the past three or four uh, ratings prospect studies, and we tested a couple of dozen different potential tune-in catalysts for radio. And we're about to share with you the top six. Is finding number six. <laughs> Yeah, it's about a third of our total sample, but more than half of the people that give the ratings report card, PJ, cash is king. Yeah, we know that Nielsen is uh, using cash to uh, not only get people into the panel, but also incentivize them throughout the time that they're on the panel. So that's always been kind of effective an effective correlation. When we've had people from the sample in our research, they have said, you know, I think it was like 80% of them have said, you know, cash and or prizes are the reason why I participate. So yeah. if you've got local cash, that's amazing. Um, if you don't and you have group contesting through uh, your company, that works great as well. It is a very very, very tiny percentage of people that both know that a group contest even exists and uh, think it's a negative. So it's a, a very, very tiny percentage. Um, we also have, we have personally have instant win games that we could talk about. We just did it on our last session, uh, Moneyball session, Mike, you and I talked about it, where we can help you stretch your budget. So you've got more instances where people can play, but not necessarily winning instances. So you can stretch those dollars out and allow yourself to, uh, you know, give away. Uh, up to a thousand dollars, for example, and make sure that that money goes that. farther. <laughs> no, that's all right. Hey, it's live. What can what can you do? <laughs> yeah. uh, but that is, you can watch our uh, most recent video to learn about that. It's basically a way of managing cash um, efficiently, the way national contests uh, manage cash across multiple radio stations. So it puts a local station on uh, even footing. And all I right, just if, underscore that you know fifty five percent of ratings likely say cash contesting, and I would wager you that in reality that's it's a bigger number yeah, people are yeah. loath in this type of interview to admit that yeah I, I like the money <laughs> and we've yeah. clearly seen this tactic punch above its weight for years and years and years yeah no question all right let's it's keep finding going. number five Well, this will make a high profile morning personality happy to know that the number five reason to market a radio station is to make people aware of a big personality or team. And I think the key point here is that it has to be a high profile morning personality or team. You've got to really be honest with yourself just because uh, this team has been on your station for eight years or 10 years. 
you've really got to either have the numbers or the ratings experience or, you know, the market knowledge that they really do matter. If it's just somebody who's nice, been there a long time, that's not high profile. You know who these high profile personalities are. And you see the reaction you get from the ratings like these. Uh, three and five of them say, yep, that would get my attention. And look, uh, the idea of promoting a high-profile morning show, for example, that's been around since I, you know radio has been around, I think. But what's really yeah. cool is that in 2023, we've got opportunities to promote them in uh, more modern ways. So even if you're thinking about like uh, traditional billboards, for example, which is a, a staple for you know promotion of, of high-profile personalities, um, we can do that digitally now, where we're actually buying things programmatically, and we can uh, adjust creative faster. We can adjust where the placement are to fit commuting patterns so we can be on one billboard on the way into town we can be on a different one on the way out for example and then we also place geofences around these uh, properties so as a vehicle is driving through it and is getting exposed to it we're capturing those devices and it gives us a chance to build audiences in other marketing channels so that we can hit them uh, with that retargeting so some real powerful stuff that sort of take the uh, the traditional thought process and uh, take it to another level and it's very radio friendly timeline, meaning timeline friendly, because you think of it on Wednesday, we can have you up pretty much by by Monday or even Friday. Yeah. Is finding number four. Now, Lee, you and I go back a lot of decades doing classic rock and classic hits, and uh, this was always a big thing, the no repeat work day. Absolutely. People complain all the time about radio repeating songs all the time. So being able to guarantee them that there aren't any repeats during your workday is really power is a really powerful message for many listeners. Now I'll warn you, at the same time, the next thing you'll hear from them is, yeah, but it just means they're gonna play all those songs tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, what DJ has an down, answer for that. Yeah, I was going to say, it, it really, I mean, if if you've um, not thought of your music scheduling as being the, you know, highest uh, priority thing for you, now would be a good time to really take a good look at that, and in particular, horizontal rotations, because really, uh, you can sort of game that system a little bit, because people's commuting patterns tend to be the same or similar every day. They're listening at a lot of the same times throughout the day, and so being able to make sure that the music is protected, that you've got rotations protected, that you're not playing the same thing in the same quarter hour on the same day every week right. um, is going to be a, a really easy way for you to tackle that perception. Now, a blood pressure raising tactic, one that would require a live person being at least on duty so your automation doesn't screw you over, is to do the $1,000 no repeat workday. And as an added bonus, if you hear it on Monday, 9 to 5, we guarantee that you won't hear it on Tuesday, 9 to 5, or we'll pay. <laughs> and the general manager will grow a forehead vein, probably. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so branding. Yep, this is really important. And, you know, I can remember, you know, in the days when we did focus groups often, having people observing the group saying, these people are stupid. And of course they're not. They're really busy. They may not know the type of music that your station uh, specializes in. They may not really understand or know about your talk lineup if you're a, a spoken word station. So taking this opportunity to promote that and make it clear, make it interesting to them. That can be a really, really powerful tactic for stations in 2023. Yeah, we've got to get out of our bubble. We we have to realize that not everybody is obsessing over what's coming out of the speakers on the radio station all day, every day. They might be listening to you and your competitors and so forth. And so um, using music position it, uh, as a marketing position is still very valuable. And one of the ways that we do it very effectively for our clients is actually through contextual YouTube. So it's not just about telling people like, hey, here are our core artists or playing you know, the music promo that's got the three hooks in it and so forth, like uh, going beyond on that associating your brand with other content that exists out there where we're sh able to show your marketing on YouTube, for example, next to uh, contextually relevant core artists, lifestyle channels, so forth, that, that really, uh, really associate your brand in the way that uh, makes your posi music position really well known. Powerful and unique tools on our ad tech stack are what gets it done. And let's face it, contextual relevance is really the way that we're going to replace cookies and some of the issues around privacy. So it's a powerful weapon in your arsenal. Speaking 
speaking of, it's amazing how many of these are the basics, right? Tell me what's playing, title and artist. Yep, we're closing in on two thirds of the RPS rating flight. Just tell me what's playing. And by the way, you've probably researched your music so that you're playing really powerful songs. And this used to be a tactic that stations had, a, you know, could do, but oh my God, it took so much tech to, to be able to run a billboard with the title of the song that you're yeah. playing right now. Now, it's really easy. Yeah, we've got uh, obviously the baked in stuff like RDS, which just sort of sits in the background and we probably don't even realize uh, the, the work that goes into getting that going. Uh, but your engineers do. I know that. Yeah. Uh, but they uh, so we've got <laughs> RDS and then uh, but we you can even do things, uh, bake things into your programming. Uh, we used to on Q101, we used to um, actually tag songs from when they were brand new all the way through power recurrent. So um, so that even if somebody's discovering things again, kind of getting out of our bubble, if somebody's discovering a song four months after you've been playing it uh they're still going to have an opportunity to get the na the title and artist of that song it also adds some audio branding to what you're doing yeah. and really what it comes down to is there is no downside there is no negative to telling people what you play and it doesn't have to be the jocks you can bake it into the programming of your station and, and really associate your station with that particular artist and song yeah, the listeners are, are in fact giving you a roadmap about how to promote your station app if you have some real-time artist and title delivery. And of course, on your website as well with your, your music player or you know whatever the talk show guest is or the topic is. So you can cross-utilize different aspects of your brand using messages that people will actually uh, relate to. Finding number one. No. Yeah. How does this not surprise any of us? No commercials. But it's not just about, you know, we're not in a position where we can say we're the commercial free radio station, but we can use it as a tactic. Absolutely. But we've, we're now, we're hitting better than two thirds, closing in on seven and 10 of the ratings likely. This is an amazingly potent tactic. And so it's all really down to the details of playing Moneyball. You know, knowing the pump or per in your market. What's the hour? What are the hours that you want to park those commercial free music segments in? And what are the ones you're willing to, frankly, over commercialize in order to pay for that com commercial free music suite? Uh, we've been, for as long as I can remember, this has been the thing that if you don't have cash on your radio station or you're in between group contests uh, through through your company and so forth, this is the absolute best tactic to promote from a marketing perspective, both on your air, but also through any kind of paid marketing. Now, but if you can combine them, though, if you do have cash and you can associate that cash with your commercial free hours, it's as mm. simple as, hey, your chance at a thousand bucks every time we're commercial free at nine, noon and five or whatever that looks like for your mm. station. Um, that that is the home run for radio. It is the absolute best combination of tactics to drive ratings uh, in 2023. And in fact, PJ, I, I would argue that there is no strategy that's used more than commercial free cash. And whether we're using a phone room to, you know, power dial offices or whether we're simply putting a piece in the mail or advertising on connected TV or regular social uh, and mobile media, this is the tactic that moves the needle more often than not. Now, there's lots of other things that we want to know. And this is the fall of Moneyball, and we're going into the field with a new study, right? And uh, Lee, I know you've made it a personal mission to make sure we're asking the audience, our partners in the radio industry, about what they want to see included. Absolutely, Mike. I, I mean, we're going to ask, We, you know, I feel that we have to be able to trend a lot of information, but I want to make sure that we're leaning into the right kinds of questions for the things that programmers are trying to figure out for this fall. So I've been on an outreach mission myself, but I'd love to hear from anybody, you know, about if you had an opportunity to ask thousands of radio listeners some questions, what would you want to know? Uh, an email to me, Lee, L-E-I-G-H at nuvudu.com. I promise I will reply to you and I'll certainly take your information very, very seriously. And if this is the first Moneyball session that you've watched so far, we've got a number of these that, that uh, get into some real granular detail. NewVoodoo.com slash webinars. Definitely recommend that you go check those out. And you guys will come back in a week or so when we get enough uh, Moneyball mail to start answering some questions here in real time while we're waiting to put our study in the field. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Lee at NewVoodoo.com, PJ at NewVoodoo.com. We'll be back in about a week with your questions. New Voodoo builds digital products and conducts research and marketing campaigns for clients. It's easy to get in touch. Drop us a line at tellmemore at NewVoodoo.com.